The relevance of this central point of both the nervous system and the skeletal structure cannot be overemphasized, such that the classical Greek philosopher Socrates posits, and I quote, if you will seek health, look first to the spine, end of quote. So then, let's get a proper framework to life's pivot in posture and balance. Welcome to this edition of the program. My name is Blessing Abu. My guest today obtained his Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, Orthopedics and uh, Spine Surgery from the University of Lorraine, Quara State. Today, as a practicing spine surgeon and consultant, he's garnered such extensive leadership experience as well as surgical repertoire in the elective and emergency spine procedure, both within the nation and different parts of the world. He is a fellow of the West African College of Surgeons and also of the AO Spine International. Here on the spot is one highly interested in pediatric spine deformities and spinal cord injuries and has written extensively on these conditions with over 35 publications uh, on spine and orthopedic surgery to his credit. Uh, with such an excellent client satisfaction record spanning 11 years, my guests could aptly be captured in this simple phrase, innovative and results-oriented professional. On the spot this week is Dr. Ahijo Abdelkadri Kau of the Spine Care Hospital, Gwagwalada, Abuja. Welcome to the program. Dr. Thank you very much, ma'am. It's a pleasure to be here today. Yes, sir. For, for you, this is one area I know people say, okay, yes, it's medicine. But why this particular interest in spine surgery and all its encompassing areas? I started my residency training in the um, National Orthopedics Hospital, Ibobi, in 2001. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the first few postings I did was in spine care. We used to have a small cubicle then in a the hospital where we keep people, um, patients with uh, spinal cord injury. And um, for a young person, <laughs> It was really traumatic for me. I mean, you, you come into the unit and you see about, um, about 20 patients and the majority of the patients had bed sores. You could practically see the bones of human beings. Some patients have been there for at least 20, 25 years in a hospital and they have no other place to go. There's no post um, um, program for them after the hospital. And so uh, they, they're residents in a hospital. But then, what is most interesting to me was, we had a head of unit who were not properly trained as spine surgeons, and um, we have patients who need a lot of care, and they're not getting those cares. And um, it was generally, um, we, as a member of the unit, you develop narcotic experience with the event. You come in the morning, the only thing you wish for is for the run to be over. Because you're seeing human beings who are, who are really going through the most difficult period of their life. I mean, for example, patients with um, high up spine uh, injury at the level of cervical spine, they're completely paralyzed from the neck downward. Mm -hmm. And um, you see these patients, they're not being moved regularly. There's no support system. There's no psychotherapy system. They, I mean, practically, they, they just die in a hospital. So that field of interest you really yeah, and want to see. Yeah, and that was the reason why I decided that um, I have to get out of Nigeria to see how they do it better in other part and then learn how it's... Okay, uh, now, in seeking that knowledge, you got so much information and you're still seeking knowledge as to make it better. Now, describe to us, really, I just made a quote or I just uh, put forward a quote from Socrates talking about you seeking health, it has to be... Uh, you should look towards the spine. What exactly is spine health all about, generally? Well, um, every, if, if you look at the way um, the human body is designed, the human body is designed in such a way as to maintain balance. And human balance, the pivot for the balance of human being is the level of the spine. If you, if you look at evolution of, 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 of um, from animal kingdom to the human kingdom, every animal starts as uh, um, the tetrapods. Four, um, four structures on the ground, proper balance. But as we go from that, human being transit from four to two. Mm. So that means they have to stand and use one 
the hand, the, that is the upper limb for, uh, for, to explore the environment. Now this put a lot of strain on the back. And so the back has to transform into a new structure, which is called, it's like a cantilever. The spine forms a pivot. Mm. The front part is constantly on compression. And the posterior part, which is the muscles in the back, mm. is permanently in tension. For human to maintain this balance, that means the front, which is the abdomen, the other part of the body, must be in the same balance with what is the in, the, in the back. Okay. Now, majority of people think everything in the back resides just the muscle you see or the spine. Actually, the spine is a, fo is a fulcrum. Okay. Every other part revolves around okay. it. Now, if you have more weight in front, that means you have more compression in front. That means the tendency for the, pe for the person, a human being, to fall forward. But if you have more in the, in the tension in the back, that means the, pe the person will fall backward. So there is a constant fight, uh, a constant um, uh, tension between what must be, what you want to balance in front of what you want to balance behind. Mm. And that's what gives you the posture all your life. Now, what you quoted is, without the spine, which form the fulcrum, mm. they will permanently be trouble all your life. Now, as we grow older, there are more, there's weakness of attention and there is more compression. Mm. And you see people start falling forward, trying to chase their center of gravity. And that's why, for you to understand how human being mobilize, how human being maintain balance, you must understand fully how to maintain your spine as a person. Okay. And that's what everything is all about, about human. All right, now talking about maintaining this, getting that actual balance, you just made mention of the fact that something triggered your movement outside the country to actually get this proper knowledge and management. How are we faring till date? The issue of management, care, and even general well-being is fine. I, I think um, the last um, five years have been phenomenal for us in our country. One, the lot of young people coming back to Nigeria who are really highly specialized people. For example, Abuja suddenly became the center of spine in Nigeria. You have a group of young people, people, I mean, led by somebody like uh, Biodo Ogumbo, who is, the pre who is presently the president of West African Spine Society. And you have a lot of other young people too, uh, influxing into Abuja, who have been properly trained abroad, yeah. who have an understanding of what it takes to run a unit called spine unit. And um, now the information, I mean, because of this information, uh, technology happening in Nigeria and with the advent of GSM, um, internet uh, penetration, increasing internet penetration, and because a lot of people started going out of Nigeria to see what they do out there. I mean, suddenly we had a lot of money to, to play with the Nigerian. Like uh, in 2014, we spent all in, in, in um, India alone, we spent about $1.3 billion dollars loan in India for medical tourism. 60% of this is for orthopedics, spine orthopedics. Mm. The other amount of money is for cardiac and other um, ailments. But now, because of this influx of people, knowledge, Nigerian is gradually catching up. But we still lack behind in so many areas, especially... Areas like what? One, um, governance. Okay. Before you set up a spine unit, it's not just bringing in a consultant to run a hospital. I mean, Oh, we have a spine surgeon. It's not just enough. You need a lot of structure around the spine surgeon. You need a psych you need psychotherapist. You need physiologist. You need um, physiotherapist. You need a physiatrist. You need a nutritionist. You need psychiatrist. It's a whole team, which unfortunately we have not been able to build in this part of the world. For example, in orthopedics in Nigeria, we have three beautiful centers in orthopedics where they still practice spine. Where are these centers? Uh, the one in Kano, National Orthopedics um, Hospital in Kano, okay. in Dala, the one in Enugu, and the one in Lagos. They're a fantastic place mm -hmm. where you can learn how to, um, to, be a, uh, to become a spine surgeon. But it's not just enough. But because ideally, what, uh, what number should a population like Nigeria have? Well, in, in advanced country, for example, where I trained, where we do about, um, um, in a day you do about, maybe about 100 surgery a day in a big hospitals. And um, out of these 100, 
For example, let me give a practical example. Mm. In Genk, where I trained in Belgium, they have about, um, they do about 140, 50 surgeries a day in their theaters. Mm. And out of these, about 10% of it is dedicated to spine and orthopedics. Okay. Now you have our own hospital setup where you have about only three or four working theater suites in a day. And one is dedicated to orthopedics in a teaching hospital. That means they can only do about three, four orthopedic cases a day or five in a teaching hospital. And then out of these four or five cases that they do, maybe they do only one spine case a day. Yeah. Now, imagine a country, for example, when I was in a teaching hospital in Abuja, in Guagalada, I see an average of two spinal cord injured patients a day, an average. Two. That means in a year, we're talking about 700 spine patients alone in Guagalada. Now you have hospitals every part of Abuja where these patients present. Now you have one operating day in a week. You're supposed to do orthopedics and spine. That means you can take one patient per day for a whole year. Now if you're looking at it from that point, now we don't have the support system like patients who don't have money for surgery. They need to go and look for the money. You don't have implants readily available. So you build up patients on bed. So beyond the patients that are being on bed, there are patients with degenerative spine problem, patients with deformity, patients with tumor, patients with infection of the spine. Wow. In the clinic building up, an average day, you up major, majorly, we have two, operate, um, two, theater, two clinic day in a week. In two clinic day in a week, you see about 100 patients that is about 200 patients in one week. Then we have, out of this, maybe you have about 60, 70% of them who require surgery. So that means we're not doing enough. So that means comparing uh, even other parts of the country, this is just for Abuja, you've just said. This is just Abuja. Sharing views with your colleagues across the it's, nation. What is the only... For example, I, I, I'm the secretary of West Africa Spine Society, and um, I liaise with a lot of doctors in Nigeria who, who operate on spine. It's the same story. Mm. One, they don't have equipment to work with. Mostly, they have to bring their own personal equipment to help patients. Two, they don't have the team support to work with. And um, the patient keep trooping in now that they know that, oh, it's readily available in our country. But there's no structure to support this. So, uh, on the average, how, how many uh, spine um, specialists or consultants do we have across the country that could, uh, should we say, okay, we're pushing more in terms of equipment and some of these areas you have listed? Well, in Abuja, for example, in Abuja, in National Hospital, you have about three, four uh, uh, spine surgeons, neurosurgeons who can operate spine. In Guagalada, you have about two neurosurgeons who can operate spine. Mm. In the government hospitals, Gariki Hospital, they have one, you know. So in Abuja alone, there are about eight to ten people who can operate spine now. But once you leave Abuja and you're going into the northern part of Nigeria, then you begin to have problems. In Kaduna, you have about two people in Kaduna. In Sokoto, you have about three, four in Sokoto. In Kebi, there's none. In Zamfara, there's none. In Gombe, there's none. In uh, Bauchi, there's none. So in most Kano. of them have to find their way into some of the centers where we have yeah. one, two, a pair so of that's federal where the So patients, you still have a lot of patients trying to look for how to get help. But you can get them. Mm. Because there are a lot of people who need help. But the facility is not there for to, to All them. right. Dr. Ahijo Kao will go on a break to let us see what all that means to actually address some of these areas of issues that you have listed. It's frightening, isn't it? Yes. You're watching on the sports on NTA News 24. We'll be right back with Dr. Kawu. If you just tuned in, the program is on the spot, and I have uh, a consultant spine surgeon, Dr. Ahijo Kawu, still on the spot. Dr. Kawu, now, uh, as is a very wonderful society, we tend to see, see things that actually push people to the extreme. Uh, accidents here and there from uh, movement, trans uh, transportation, as well as some other means that will impact negatively on the structure of the body. Now, let's uh, find a way of addressing some of these issues. 
from people's lifestyle to some other means that will actually push them to that extreme. What other things do we need to know about pressure on the spine and its management? Um, I, I think um, w when we were growing up in this part of the world, I mean Nigeria in the early 80s, and the school system is such that even a teacher is particular about the way kids sit. And um, we're, we're forced to exercise during break. We have exercise period. We're allowed to play football. So the, the development of our country at that point was focused on not only just the mental development of kids, but then the social, psychological, and uh, physical development was taken into consideration in the curriculum of young people. Mm. So this, if you go to most of it, well, local schools now in Nigeria, the sports system is dead. Um, the feeds are no longer there. The, the practical understanding of we have uh, teachers who check key, uh, children, um, pupil in school, these are completely dead. I think for us, it's to go back to the basis. Mm. If we can understand this, then it becomes easy for us. But once we do not know why a particular program is instituted at that time, and we decide to remove them, then we run into trouble. Children must be allowed to be kids. They must be allowed to run around. They must be allowed to climb tree. This is to develop their mus muscles mm. so that later in life, they, they can draw on it. Beyond developing muscles, once you're lucky to run around, they eat all kinds of food, they take fruits, they eat this, they build a muscle, uh, muscle um, bone mass. They keep putting calcium into their, into their bones so that by 30, age of 30, when it peaks, you have had kids who run around, who ate fruit, who are healthy. And so by the time they're going down the drain from 30, going down to 60, 70, they have enough bone mass to draw on. All right. I asked a question again, background because I know you have specific training in orthopedics, uh, sub uh, specialty such as uh, spinal uh, degenerative disease and also their connecting deformity surgery. And are you also interested in children? I'm glad you took on that particular example. Are uh, these cases more in children now or adults? Those as you have seen. You know, you know um, deformity cuts across from childhood up to adulthood. For example, m most of the deformities you see in childhood is idiopathic scoliosis, um, from other problems too, like infection in Nigerian tuberculosis as the most important um, factor. But as you grow older, your spine starts degenerating, and as it degenerates. Then is that, it's that nature or just because of it's the, nature? Okay. It's nature, then aided by the type of lifestyle we have imbibed over the last few years. So, as you grow older, the spine, and that's why when you go to villages, I see most of these old women, you see them in the, they're already kaifus, mm. they are like bent you know, over. bent over. But it's not, it's not a bad thing when you look at it from the mechanical point by mechanical point of view in human body. Once you begin to drop or lose certain parts you try to compensate for it. So to get balance, you have to begin to drop forward gradually. But you can be corrected. I mean, you, it, it's, you can. Yeah, it, it, you can do that. But that's not what nature is looking for. Nature is permanently looking for balance. It's above vacuum. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things. But over the last few years, we've seen a lot of patients, especially young people from village, because of um, malnutrition, they develop um, TB. And some of these kids are not even immunized. So TB is on rampage. We have um, a new strain of tuberculosis that is um, multi-drug resistant. And so... So what do you advocate for in such uh, situations? Arresting that in time? <laughs> you know, we, we live in an interesting time. We, it's a country with a lot of problems, you know. As we're addressing one problem, the other ones, you know, rare. it's like Medusa. Mm. Cut one head, the other heads come up. Okay. Uh, come up. But I think one of the most important things is for all of us to be educated about what we have to deal with in life. Mm. I think we're bringing in young people into the world without really preparing them. We're over pampering our kids. Mm. So we need children who should be children. We should not produce superhuman kids. I mean, educated people want their kids to have to, to take first position, second position. So from classroom, back home into a classroom, it's a total you know, collection of So we, we have completely taken away the childhood of our kids. So we need children to be children. And they have to play, they have to run around, so that they build up their muscle mass while they're doing this.
<laughs> it's not just institution, you know, they have to go and play football. At. No, kids must run around. Kids must play with their own age mates. This is the way they develop, both mentally and socially. All right, uh, Dr. Kaul, let's take this uh, quick um, outlook. I know most, uh, most times when people get involved in accidents and some other means that will have um, uh, disfigured their body, whether the uh, muscles or the mm. bones, people get, tend to want to go the traditional way. I know that should be a worrisome situation because sometimes when they now fail, they return to you the orthodox way of trying to get help. Now, should you find yourself in such a situation, what do you advise, especially against the background of different things that we have as mobility in our nation? I think the most important thing is, is still education. Let, let me give you one, one practical example of what happened to us once. When I was training in Ibobi mm. in, the, in, in, in early 2000, we had a patient with spinal problem. She had a fracture of the back and um, we saw her and told her, you see, we can't fix you at this time. But we put a jacket for the patient. I said, go home, lie on bed, don't do anything, you will heal. Few days later, we were watching television and then we saw the patient, you know, with all kinds of drug in one Christian program and said, you know, those doctors don't know what they're doing. And so he was, she was healed there. And they told her to jump. She jumped a number of times. By the time she got home, she became completely paralyzed. So she so came back to the us. miracle didn't take place? Well, you know, so I believe in that. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. the doctors have been co competing with traditional bone setters, the feet healers over the last few years, and it's the same problem. Once people do not have where to run to, once the health care structure of a country cannot accommodate the people of the of their country, they look for alternative. And mm -hmm. to be honest with you, sometimes they foolishly go out and come back and pay dearly for their own life. Certain part of your body can forgive you. For example, the long bones can forgive you. If you have fracture long, if there's a fracture long bones and you decide to go to a traditional bone setter, they fix it wrongly. You have either myunion or you have um, deformity, mm. and you can come back to the doctor. It can be done. But for example, if you have a spine problem, mm. and then you decide to go to traditional bone setter, and you have spinal cord injury, Humpty Dumpty has had a great fall. Mm. The king has oh, man. And king's man could not put them together again. They won't be able to put them together again. And that's where we have to begin to educate our people. Okay, talking about putting things together, Dr. Kao, uh, I know in, uh, there was an article written and published by you on the 8th of June titled Nigeria Healthcare Delivery System, its failure, our collective pain. What other pains we will be getting into if we do not take the issue of spine health serious in Nigeria? You know, in the last few, if you look at statistics from the, from the first world, I mean, from the developed world, the reason why, the major reason why a lot of people will be out of job is because of back pain. It's one of the major reasons for loss of job, work hard. That means the economy will suffer when you don't have active people who are supposed to do this work. We don't have statistics in our country because it's very difficult to do research in a country like this. But if you look at research from, from one or two centers in Nigeria, back pain is beginning to be one of the major reasons why people are out of work. Mm. And once we begin to have this problem, the economy of that particular country is going to suffer. But then again, our country is a unique country. People go to work or they don't go to work. They it has paid. never been, I mean, they get paid and it hasn't affected the, the, the level of our economy. But then we must look at it properly. Back problem, health problem, is a serious harbinger of a social economic progress. It's an indicator of social growth of a particular country. So if we begin to look at and take this seriously, then we know that we're dealing with, uh, we're, we're trying to build a future for ourselves. Mm. Okay, now, um, innovation, technology is helping the outside world more than one would even expect. But then we need to still look forward to having such in our own climb. What kind of trend in their future would you and your colleagues advocate at this time? Uh, uh, legislation level and some other means to actually get us right there. Yeah, I, I, the, I think the first thing is we need first and foremost to build our own spine center in this country. Just as we have um, National Orthopedic Center, we must begin to develop our own neurologic center. Now, it's not just building a structure. 
If you look at a, 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 um, a hospital like Manipa, it's a university. Manipa is one of the biggest um, destiny in the world, university in the world. Every unit of Manipa has an industry attached to it. This is a country, Nigerian, where syringe is brought from China, needle from China, implants from Indian. Everything that you need to, to, to save life is brought from other country. It's not difficult, I mean, it's not rocket science for us to even produce cutting wood. I mean, we, we import cutting. cutting wool. I mean, we import cutting wool. We have cutting farms. No, we yeah. import cutting wool. I mean, it's that bad. You want to do spine. For example, let's look at spine package. Mm. You need MRI. MRI is not produced in Nigeria. Mm. We have to buy MRI. We make diagnosis. Patient comes into the hospital. We want to operate patients. You need implants. Implants are bought from Indian or China. I mean, for heaven's sake, titanium can be found in Nigeria. In Abba, in Newi, they can fabricate this for us. So the schools should actually return to doing more research and studies on what we can do here. That's what we need in a country like us. We need young people. We need government who understood what they need. We need people to socially engineer our country for us. Mm. We need people to say, today this is where we are. In the next 10 years, this is where we, we should be. be. And if we do not do that, we'll constantly come back to the same table and have this and beautiful discussion. Around. Well, if something goes wrong, don't whine about it. Have a spine about it. Adjust, adapt, and move forward. That's not my word. It's from James Gary. Another quote on our program today. That's a conversation with my guest on the spot this week, consultant spine surgeon, Dr. Ahijo Abdukadri Kawu. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, drawing this perspective to the post show. To our viewer, Thank you for watching in the right frame of mind and stand. Join us again on the next edition. Goodbye.